This video is brought to you by Monoprice, offering you high quality cables at everyday low prices, all with a lifetime warranty. Monoprice also has adapters, keyboards, headphones, and even gaming monitors. Click the link in the description for more information or visit monoprice.com. Excellent! Welcome to today's video, everyone. Based on all of your excellent feedback, I am doing another edition of the first five, this time covering the first five things I consider when I'm buying a new motherboard. As always, your feedback is appreciated via your comments, likes, or dislikes. And just like last time, I want to know if you agree or disagree with my first five choices. The motherboard is a delicate creature, though. Like this Gigabyte Z97X SoC, for example, often overlooked, often seen as simply a go-between betwixt your CPU, memory, storage, and video card, and even worse, very often blamed for computer problems that arise simply due to its central location. But I've had a long and sordid love affair with motherboards, and with the help of this video, you can too. Since you're all viewers of my channel, I am once again going to make the astute assumption that prior to considering your motherboard, you've already chosen a CPU. Maybe even a few other choice components for your build as well. But where to go from there, especially when confronted with the milieu of matriarchal mainboards on any given PC retail website? Well, the first thing I would want to do is narrow down my choices to match the motherboard socket type with the socket type of my chosen CPU. This one is pretty straightforward. For AMD, there is AM3 Plus for CPUs and FM2 Plus for APUs. And on the Intel side, you have LGA1150 for mainstream processors, as well as LGA2011-3 for high-end enthusiast chips. Take this one step further by checking the motherboard manufacturer's website where CPU compatibility charts will be available to confirm that your CPU will work with your chosen motherboard. Just remember, sometimes a BIOS or UEFI update might be necessary. The second thing is another compatibility check, this time the motherboard's size or form factor. This will make sure it will actually fit in your case. ATX is the standard size where you'll find the most widest selection of motherboards and compatible cases. Larger sizes like EATX are a bit less common, they're usually used for high-end boards, and they'll need a larger case to fit them. Smaller sizes are becoming more and more popular, MicroATX is one step down from ATX, gives you a smaller size while still retaining some expansion slots, and Mini ITX is the smallest of the mainstream form factors, suitable for tiny systems where minimizing space is more important than expandability. The third thing I'd look at is the chipset. That's a chip on the board that, among other things, helps shuttle data to and from your CPU from other parts of the system, like your storage SSDs or your hard drives. The chipset can have a big impact on the board's feature support. So for example, on the Intel side, you need an X or Z series chipset, like the uh, X99 or Z97, in order to enable overclocking on your K series CPU, like a 4970K, for example. There are cut down chipsets that can be found on budget motherboards, but for my money, I always like to go for the best chipset available. That currently means Z97 or X99 chipset for Intel boards, or A88X or 990FX chipsets on the AMD side. The fourth thing I consider is expansion potential. Building your computer is all about upgrading it every chance you get in the future, right? This means looking at storage support. Are there a bare minimum of SATA connectors, or has the manufacturer added more? Are they all SATA Revision 3 to handle fast SSDs? Have they included next generation storage like M.2 support or SATA Express? Also, there's the PCI Express slots. You'll need at least one for your graphics card, but uh, are there more for capture, audio, or RAID cards? Or can you add another GPU in the future with Crossfire or SLI support? Are the lower PCI Express slots routed directly to the CPU or through the chipset, which can limit their performance? Also, I might like to add memory as a future upgrade, so the DIMM slots are also very important. I consider four to be the minimum for mainstream systems like Z97, and I like to have eight available for enthusiast or workstation boards on Intel's X99 platform. The fifth thing that I consider, much as I hate to admit it, is the board's aesthetics. Look here at this Gigabyte Z97X SoC board, how beautifully orange and black it is. See, I was raised by Maximum PC and Gordon Ung to focus on performance with PCs, but as DIY computer building has evolved, I can't help but emphasize making a system that is uniquely your own, and aesthetic choices simply play a huge role in that. I chose this board, for example, not just because Gigabyte is a manufacturer that I trust and it has all the features I need, but also very much because I am setting up a build in the Be Quiet Silent Base 800 case, which is black with orange trim, and this board just matches perfectly. I make no apologies for this, but honestly, if you go back 10 years or so, there was nowhere near this level of visual choice when it comes to motherboards with 
black PCBs and stylish accents and badass angular heat designs. But that is all of my five things. Uh, but there are other things that you might consider too while motherboard shopping. So I want to know what your first five things are, what features or design choices make or break a motherboard's potential for you. Let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, go ahead and hit that like button while you're down there. Maybe share this video if you know anyone who you think might like it. Check out my store where you can support me and my channel by buying a shirt like this one. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching. Check out my store where you can support me. Oh, there's been a battery on the table this whole time.